1987 Porsche 944 Turbo Cup, crescendo and fortissimo characterize the start of every race. Every now and again, the tempo becomes a little too heated. But slight contretemps are scarcely enough to spoil the true enthusiast's enjoyment. And driving into the pits may have something akin to driving into sand pits. Before the start, everyone seems calm and collected, in the knowledge that the experienced mechanics have done their job. And with personal regards to accompany each driver on his way and might expect a muted andante in the concert of sport enthusiasts if it were not for the fact that every single person who takes part is intent on driving to win. In its second year, the Porsche 944 Turbo Cup maintains an unmistakable upward trend. At the start of the season, a total of more than 40 entries had been received from six nations. The future would hold fast and furious action in contrast perhaps to the peace and harmony which reign among this circle of automobile enthusiasts. Such are the first impressions which, as is often the case, do not fully reflect reality. Everyone has his own way of trying to direct the course of motor racing history. Staying out front is the overriding aim. It's no surprise that the 944 Turbo Cup rouses curiosity. When a famous maestro of motor racing was poised and ready with his conductor's baton, fully capable of spreading his enthusiasm for the special concerns of the competition at the drivers' meetings, which all participants must attend. For a Turbo Cup Porsche, every race begins with a scrutiny before the car passes to the loving care of the engineers and mechanics. stipulate that all the cars should meet the same technical specifications, with the result that particular significance devolves upon the fine-tuning of the chassis. Important feedback comes from the drivers themselves. What the driver has felt through the seat of his pants, so to speak, is interpreted by the team mechanics. This also applies to the choice and fitting of racing tyres. Martin Wimmer, a guest driver in more than one 944 Turbo Cup race, also made sure to tune his car for the best possible performance. Throughout the season, the specialists from Dunlop were there to provide optimum traction and the best possible grip. They also made sure that the cars of all the drivers who took part in the 944 Turbo Cup were shod with exactly the same tyres, the very best for the prevailing conditions. Tyres, wheels, brakes, Without the precision work of the mechanics, none of the drivers could hope to succeed. It's the mechanics who bear the entire responsibility for preparing the cars. It is only when they have swept the perspiration from their brows that racing can begin. A number of prominent guests in the Porsche Turbo Cup voice their opinions. This car is great fun to drive because in comparison with the last race, it's become much quieter at the back. The ABS brakes are perfect. It really is a very, very good car. That was the comment of Norbert Haug, critical motorsport journalist and insider.
It really is a lot of fun. Although the cars are admittedly difficult to drive, a very precise style of driving is called for, in other words, sideways with a lot of opposite lock is no help at all, driving them is very good training. And not just for experienced drivers, but also for newcomers who should learn how to drive precisely. In my opinion, the Porsche Turbo Cup is an extremely good idea. So noted Dieter Cresta, four times European saloon car champion after the race in Salzburg. The Porsche 944 Turbo Cup is the only thing I can imagine as an alternative to my motorcycle racing. So said Martin Wimmer, the West German Grand Prix motorcycle ace, adding the weight of his opinion. Talented young drivers were also given their chances, invited drivers. Alan Lohr receiving a little coaching from one of the old hands. And with good reason, because the standard of driving in the 944 Turbo Cup is professional and highly competitive. The conductor of the Turbo Orchestra was there to ensure that everything was as it should be. Dieter Glemser, the organizer of the Turbo Cup, had a tight grip on the reins. And he used every opportunity of informing the competitors or discussing their problems with them. Blaupunkt cameras, specially installed in the racing cars, supplied video recordings which were a great practical use, supplying impressive shots both for television viewers and drivers. Backward-facing camera functions like an electronic rear-view mirror. This scene is documentary evidence of the tussles that can and did occur in the turbo car. Mr. Glemser thought he'd seen it all, but even he had to sit down before he could give the signal to start the race. Starting list. Acquainted with the ways of the world, the drivers sometimes witness strange sights on their way to the start. The ritual is the same on every racing circuit. The drivers don their helmets. The fans take their last opportunity of enjoying a close-up view of the cars and drivers of their favorite teams, while the drivers devote their entire attention to the critical start phase and nothing else. The younger drivers have an ear for the last words of sound advice, while the countdown continues its unstoppable course. And then the waiting's over. The cars complete a warm-up lap. The Turbo Cup uses the Indianapolis flying start. When the green light shows, the hunt is on. The concert of our turbo musicians begins. The events which take place in the first bend are repeated immediately after the start of every 944 turbo race and never lose their breathtaking quality. Time and again, pacemakers sprint ahead to seek and find new ideal lines, if they can maintain their forward momentum. The first bends are the worst. Sometimes this is where races are won or lost. Anyone who loses contact here will find it difficult to catch up with the pack. Both drivers and machinery are pressed to their limits in races like this. The pit team lets its driver know where he stands. 
The driver who has to abandon the race usually has a story to tell. What he says cannot always be put into print. Then the mechanics spring into action, intent on saving what there is to save. But a racing car cannot always be made raceworthy. The premature end of the race. Time for the driver to turn his thoughts to the next challenge, while some of his fellow competitors have problems with their sense of orientation. With all the effort which each individual involved devotes to a race like this, with all the care which goes into the preparation of each car, a sobering moment arrives for all the runners up because, as always, there is only one winner. Among racing cars, the 944 Turbo has a very special reputation. Roland Ash explains why. With ABS, it's perfect. There's nothing better. I can still brake when in the corner, grab first gear in the hairpin, and then away. The Turbo Cup Porsche embodies state-of-the-art engineering expertise. An electronically controlled catalytic converter allows the engine to run on unleaded fuel without any loss of performance. But back to the cockpit. The well-balanced field that lines up at the start of every Porsche 944 Turbo Cup race and the high performance of the competition cars are the spectators' guarantee for outstanding racing. Not infrequently, the Turbo Cup event was the absolute high point of a racing weekend. Seven different winners in ten races bear witness to the balance and strength of the field. International participation and circuits in six different European countries selected to host the races are features in line with the Porsche objective of making the 944 Turbo Cup an event of international significance. The organizers obviously knew what they were doing when they chose the circuits. Salzburg, for example. to Brno in Czechoslovakia had an excitement all of its own. In this, Czechoslovakia's second largest city, motor racing is all too rare a sight. Berlin is another good example. But it was in Monza, in the north of Italy, that the 87 season was rung in. Porsche troop arrived in Spain, the tone was set by Iberian folklore, at least as long as the evening lasted. The Porsche 944 Turbo, on the track or on the road. In every driver, this sports car awakened dreams which often have an acoustic background all of their own. So, Spitze kommt, Bengt Drecker, der ehemalige schwedische Formel-3-Meister, hat die Sache vorerst locker im Griff. Von Reihenfolge nach Runde 1 stand sich Drecker auf Schweden 34 Wolf, Marburg 17, der Pilot aus Spanien 11, Aschberg Tabellenführer, Jockel Winkelhoff, der für einmal zu Besuch gekommen ist.
no one was able to withstand the fascination of the 944 Turbo Cup. Drama and excitement were all embracing. The team, the mechanics, and the backup crew bear the brunt of worry. Will problems arise, or will everything run smoothly? It bodes ill if a car turns into the pits during a race. Finding a fault quickly means capturing valuable points for the championship. No boost pressure. Had a good start, was in second place, but no boost pressure, and without it, you're out. Was the commentary which Jorfel Winkelhock, champion of the previous year, gave on his involuntary pit stop. Out of luck, one driver says goodbye to his chances of winning, while the spectators follow every event with interest. Professor Helmut Bott and Peter Schutz maintain frontline contact. The informant is Peter Falk, chief steward of the race. Back in action after repair. Any chance of winning has slipped away, but the race goes on as long as the wheels keep turning. Dieter Glemser knew more at the end of every race than at the beginning, thanks to the Blaupunkt video cameras installed at one of the three works turbo pushes. Driven by prominent top-grade guest drivers in each of the races, cameras facing forward and backward supply dramatic driver's eye views of events on the track. The camera's view over the tail of the car also provides many a nerve-wracking sight. Once or twice, the cameramen in their high-speed mounts had front-row seats in the 944 Turbo Cup. Front-row seats that were not guaranteed to keep their occupants out of the firing line, which could lead to nervousness even in old hands and the resultant inability to stick to the straight and narrow, although this had little impact on the general enjoyment. The Porsche 944 Turbo Cup was a memorable event an event which was reflected in the driver's enclosure because a marquee was erected at every race to accommodate Porsche's several hundred invited guests. <laughs> the generous hospitality was enjoyed by all. But when the engines were started, the tent and the pits were deserted. There's no escape from the fascination of shots like these. On every circuit, the drivers and their Porsches delivered superb racing. or, more accurately, a few scenes from this race, will serve to illustrate the drama of the 87 season. At the start of August, Spa in Belgium was the scene of the duel between the fastest star guest and the fastest Cup Series driver, Hans Stuck and Roland Asch. The scenes which took place in the course of the race fascinated millions of television spectators, both in Belgium and abroad. In the last hairpin, Stuck found the ideal line to foil Asch's ultimate attack. All the races had one thing in common. Tactical challenges were not the right approach. The car had to be driven flat out from the word go. After the Porsche 944 Turbo Cup Series had taken its exciting course, the championship was decided in the very last race. But before we honor the victors and celebrate their successes, let's turn to the season's unlucky drivers. representative of them all. Let's turn back to the lucky winners. Four drivers took the chequered flag in four different races. Harald Becker, Hans Stuck, a guest driver without points, Wolfgang Wolf, 
or George Pacher from Austria. Two drivers' names appeared twice in the list of winners, Peter Oberndorfer and Bengt Treghardt. One driver scored a hat-trick, Roland Asch. Porsche chairman, Professor Rudi Noppen, summed up. So it's great fun for me to take part and experience the excitement generated by this series of races, by the Turbo Cup. I have the feeling that I'm not the only one who gets caught up by the excitement. His was an enthusiasm which spread to his colleagues, Kurt Fempel and Hans Halbach, who were there to congratulate the winners of several Turbo Cup races. After an action-packed season, the new and worthy champion in the 1987 Porsche 944 Turbo Cup is Roland Asch. Racing has come to a close. Even though the cars have long since left the track, it will be a long time before it's forgotten. The 1987 Porsche 944 Turbo Cup.